America, His Excellency Mr. Bene Mpoko and uh, Africa analyst in a face you know, advocate Sipo Mantula. A very good evening to you all and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Ibrahim, I, I think I'll begin with you. I mean, in December you launched the One Africa Initiative um, and really it's about uniting Africans across the continent. Speak to us a bit about that. Um, you know, how, how well has it been doing? I know it's only been two months mm. and some of the projects that you plan on getting underway. Yeah, no, th thanks very much for the opportunity. I think that um, we were really, the country was reverberating with what happened again in September 2019 when violence broke up between South Africans and their African counterparts in the townships of South Africa. And we were standing on the eve of President Ramaphosa assuming the leadership of the African Union, but we were also on the great opportunity with the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Mm. And the last thing you want at a moment like that is for intra-African violence sure. um, to occur. And the last thing you want as a South African is that we be accused of bigotry of, in the form of xenophobia when we have been the victims of racism under apartheid. Mm. And so One Africa is really a response to creating that kind of social cohesion, trying to say it's okay to have all these micro identities, but how do we create an overarching macro African identity that can unite us and prepare us for the opportunities of the African continent. And so we've identified a few short term programs, but more importantly, we've identified long term programs that can create lasting peace in the hotspots that can harmonize entrepreneurship in our townships and that is able to overcome stereotypes and anecdotes and rumors mm. that create conflict with facts, with research and with analysis. And so I think we're getting um, quite a good traction, um, particularly also from companies of South African origin who do business in Africa. I think they've had a wake-up call and they understand the need to come to the party. Ambassador, I'm going to bring you into this conversation. I mean, when we speak of xenophobia, the, instant, the cases that we have seen in South Africa are very publicized, but this, this issue is not exclusive to South Africa. I mean, you've got Burundi refugees who have been made to feel unwelcomed in Malawi. Um, I, I could go on. What would you say is the underlying issue? I mean, one of the reasons that, that were given for our xenophobic attacks was that, you know, the, the nationals were saying, well, we've got all these foreigners who are coming into our country and, uh, you know, they're taking our jobs. You know, they're taking the land that we should be getting, the housing that we should be getting as South African citizens. What would you say, in your view, is the underlying issue of why Africans, you know, who, who travel within their continent feel so uncomfortable and so unwelcomed? Yes, the issue uh, is not new. Uh, in a sense that um, our division is historical. Africans were divided when we were being sold as slaves. Africans were divided when we were uh, colonized. Africans were divided when they uh, wanted to uh, um, get our resources, to, to plunder our resources. So that division has been there. It's an historical factor. So that as when we look at each other, we don't accept each other because mm -hmm. we have been divided. You remember the policy of divide and conquer. So we need to get over that so we can accept each other as a human beings, as a fellow Africans, and so forth. So that that division will leave it behind us. Um, therefore, what Ambassador Rasul is, is saying is that we need to go through a process of healing ourselves from those wounds of division mm. uh, that have taken place throughout the history. So it's not a, a new phenomenon, yes. but what's new is what is it we bring to the table so that we can accept each other. It's a matter of accepting each other. So you see another African face, you say, I'm looking at a fellow African, I'm looking at a human being, mm. I'm, looking at, I'm just looking at myself in the mirror. I'm not looking at a stranger, I'm looking at my sister, a brother, and so forth and so on. Mm. That's what we need to do. Sibo, I'm keen to hear your take. I mean, what will it take for Africans to be able to travel to other you know, countries freely and feel welcomed? What really needs to be done? Uh, Lindy, Jumbo Africa, and even to the viewers, I think what is very critical is uh, the issue of people's movement. 
Uh, as it has been said by my elders here, the issue of the history, we have to take it into uh, account. But remember the one uh, Africa when African Union 2013 launched its agenda 2063. They spoke about this one Africa. Now you have the challenge in West Africa where borders are, are being closed. Uh, you have a challenge of our immigration system, our what we call the home affairs, regional corporations, the issue of identity cards of uh, Africans, where, whether it's about traveling, whether it's around elections. So you have a serious challenge of a colonial infrastructure that is still sitting in the minds of Africans. And traveling again, it's important for the youth of this continent to travel this continent. Last week, remember, we were talking about not thinking of Europe, but thinking of the continent. Sure. So it is critical that how do we even encourage cultural exchange program? I have been happy on your programs to move away from social cohesion and go back to what the African Charter is saying, national solidarity. Mm. You know, most of the liberation movements talk of international solidarity, but they don't practice it. Now, the issue that we should have been emphasizing is that cultural diplomacy of traveling, camping, and understanding this continent in the 21st century, because we said the 21st century, it is an African century. Yeah. But it seems diplomacy has gone into a deep sleep mm. because it's economic and political is not cultural. That is my concern, you know, Linda, yeah. that diplomacy must change its, its face. You know, as you're speaking, I'm just thinking about how many times, you know, in my travels, I've connected mm. through Ethiopia. Yeah, and you need, a, you need a visa, you do get it on arrival mm -hmm. to get into that country and how much easier it would be. I mean, if I'm going to, I don't know, Singapore and I happen to have, you know, a transit through Ethiopian, Air, Ethiopian Airways in Ethiopia mm -hmm. and I can go into the country and I can explore, you know, while I'm there, I've got a few hours to kill yeah. and, and I don't have to worry about, sure, you know, sure. a visa on arrival and standing in long queues and yeah. will I make it for my next mm -hmm. flight? So. I think that's one of the things we really do need to look at. Linda, I'll be very brief so that I can give my elders a chance. South African passport holders have access to more than 190 countries. But the challenge our passports in Africa, Ambassador, they still have a French language. <laughs> that's the thing. We can't be having a French language in our traveling document. Look, you know, I don't know what yes, we, yeah. we, we can't after 1994, we still have a passport that still have a French language on it. We can't. Ambassador, what's your take on that? No, but you see, when we were fighting uh, against our uh, colonial masters, we, our founding fathers, they got together. Some of them, they came, it doesn't matter where they went, they were given the passport of their country. Mm -hmm. A lot of South Africans mm -hmm. who were in the liberation movement, they were given passports uh, mm -hmm. from Kenya, from Correct. DRC, yeah, from yeah, Egypt, yeah, yeah, from yeah, everywhere. Yeah. So, they were united. They yeah. were thinking the same way. Mm -mm. Okay? But the, that unity had evaporated mm -mm. once we get in, in our independence. So we need to go back to the basics. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You know, because together we win. Yeah. Sure. Divided, see, they will lose. Abraham? But you see, the, the, the point that is changing now yeah. is that we have very competitive airlines yeah. within Africa for yeah. the first yeah. time. Correct. That's French. Yeah. was very important for, because for me to get to a French-speaking yeah, African yeah, country, country, I yeah. probably had to go through Paris and mm. then fly back to Africa. Correct. Now we've got massively good airlines yeah. that can connect us directly, yeah. which means yeah. that the imperative mm. for a colonial language mm. is, is less. But I want so, to agree with Sipo yeah. that we have to change the language of... African engagement yeah, yeah, yeah. and now I'm not speaking about the linguistic language yeah, 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 I'm yeah. saying we speak politics and yeah. then it's often frayed yeah, with tension yeah, 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 we speak yeah. economics yeah. and it's frayed with, with competition, yeah, competition yeah. maybe the lingua franca uh, yeah, yeah, is yeah. culture correct yeah maybe we will speak in a language of music where we don't understand yeah, yeah, some yeah, languages, yeah, but yeah. our hearts beat together. Yeah, yeah. Maybe when we taste each other's cuisine, yeah, we get yeah. an appreciation and Correct. love yeah, for each other. Yeah, yeah. Maybe 
when we look and we share design yeah, yeah. across the African continent, yeah. we feel proud again of what we wear yeah, yeah, and the yeah. colors we wear. Yeah. And so yeah, I yeah, think yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. the idea, and, and that's why One Africa does have a strong cultural component. We don't yeah. want to call it musical concerts. Yeah, yeah. We want a cultural component because musical concerts can yeah. become a cliché. Correct, yeah, yeah. And oh. we think mm -hmm. if we bring mm -hmm. in this artist and that mm -hmm. artist, mm -hmm. we've solved the problem. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. We need culture in its fullest form Correct, yeah. to yeah. unite us and to give us an African identity because sometimes we are dominated by national identities. Correct, yeah. Sometimes yeah. we are yeah. dominated yeah. by tribal identities. Sure, sure, sure. Sometimes we are dominated yeah. by religious identities sure. and Correct, political yeah. identities. Correct, yeah. We need mm. an identity that says, I am an African yeah. and then I'm also a South African, then I'm also a Muslim, then I'm also of a Malay origin. Sure, sure. If we can have that language, mm. we can have the condition yeah. for yeah. unity. Mm -mm. for solidarity mm -mm. and for cohesion. Sure.